in this video, I'm gonna help you figure out if you can get by on the M1 Mac Mini or MacBook Air for that matter, or if you really truly need one of the way more expensive, but also way higher performance M1 Mac Studios or MacBook Pros. But more importantly, I'm gonna tell you just exactly why. Sponsored by the CuriosityStream and Nebula Bundle, where I just posted part three of my exclusive studio tour series. Now, this isn't one of those, I bought return the best worst M1 Max ultra mind blown truth right wrong, they lied videos. Cause I'll drop spoilers like spoilers on the whole damn thing right now. Just get the M1 Mac mini or the MacBook Air. For 80% plus of us, that is the cheat code, the Omega level move. But the why, the why might surprise you. And yet, I'll also explain in vivid detail why 20% of us might actually need the M1 Pro or Max or even Ultra, especially Ultra, because there's been just so much confusion about the Ultra. And I'll explain all of that in a minute. But for real, don't sleep on the OG M1. It's speed force fast compared to the older Intel chips that maybe kept your lap or your coffee toasty warm all day, but could just barely keep a handful of Chrome tabs or Electron apps scrolling at all. But yeah, basically for not a lot of money, at least not in the Apple scale of things, you get four efficiency cores, four performance cores, up to eight graphics cores, 16 neural engine cores, H.264 and HEVC media accelerators, and eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I'll break down what that actually means in terms of real world situations in a minute. But even the baseline M1 will be night and day for you when it comes to mostly all workloads, mostly. Video, audio, coding, modeling, machine learning, even, yeah, those Chrome and Electron apps. But writing, browsing, presentations, spreadsheets, all the productivity stuff too. Especially if your workloads don't really make heavy use of multiple cores because all of the single cores across the entire M1 line are all pretty much exactly the same. There are some subtleties in the cooling and the clustering, but it's the exact same E cores, P cores, GPU cores, and A and E cores as in the M1. The M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra just have massively more of those cores so they can handle massively more multi-core workloads on those massively more multiple cores. It's like, Imagine the same ship with one, two, or four containers on it. All the containers are gonna get there at the same time because the same ship, but the more containers means you can ship more in the same time. So if you only have enough for one container, more won't help you. But if you do actually fill them all up, it's like getting four trips in one, then more is way better, like exponentially better. And like the ship, there are no faster chips, at least not yet not until Apple ships an M2 family later this year or early next year, which could offer like 10 to 20% better perf as well as better efficiency across the various cores. We'll have to wait and see. But if you can't wait and you need more and you need it now, 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 if you're a creative pro and you have heavy pro workloads and time is money to you, that's where M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra really might come in clutch for you with the more and the now. For example, if you need more built-in ports than the M1 provides, and you'd rather spend your money on the machine itself than on adapters and hubs, M1 Pro and M1 Max give you an extra USB and Thunderbolt controller, and the M1 Ultra even more. So instead of two Thunderbolt ports on the M1 Mac Mini, you get four on the M1 Max Mac Studio and six on the M1 Ultra, which may be especially important to you if you wanna do something like drive NASA or Ozymandias amounts of displays, also an SDXC card slot and 10 gigabit ethernet. Also RAM, the M1 Mac mini and MacBook Air max out at 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which is great because the GPU gets a ton of RAM and the CPU gets really fast bandwidth and every compute unit can directly access that pool without all the usual overhead that comes from copying back and forth, but it's not compound V. It's not magical. And if you really need to keep very large files in memory or handle multiple very large workloads at once, you're still gonna need larger amounts of RAM, which means M1 Pro up to 32 gigabytes on the MacBook Pro, M1 Max up to 64 gigabytes on the MacBook Pro or Mac Studio, and M1 Ultra up to 128 gigabytes on the Mac Studio. In other words, if you know what memory pressure is and you're feeling it, you might legit need to give your Mac more. And yes, the cores, if you're doing large code compiles, 
using a ton of VMs or simulators, using a bunch of audio plugins or dealing with some really gnarly video codecs, M1 Pro and M1 Max flip the tables on four E cores and four P cores and give you two E cores and up to eight P cores to just throw at your problems. M1 Ultra, four E cores and 16 P cores. So if you know that your CPU workload scales linearly, it's the M1 Ultra, not the sky, that's your only limit here. Also, if you're doing a lot of high intensity, real-time modeling and effects, applying heavy filters, just all the polygons, all the deformations, then M1 Pro offers up to 16 GPU cores, M1 Max up to 32 cores, and the M1 Ultra up to 64 cores, all presented as single targets for Apple's Metal API, which means very close to linear scalability for those workloads as well. The only exception is the Neural Engine cores, because those are the same from M1 all the way up to M1 Max. If you want more of those, you have to go to M1 Ultra because it gives you double the blocks. And for a variety of technical reasons, they're not presented as a single core ML target like the GPUs are for Metal, but the machine learning controller will still dispatch between the additional accelerators on all those extra CPU cores, all those GPU cores, and the two A&E blocks, giving you roughly somewhere between 1.5 and 1.75, the performance for multiple workloads done in parallel. And for the media engines, while M1 only has H.264 and HEVC, M1 Pro adds in ProRes accelerators. M1 Max doubles them and M1 Ultra doubles them again. So if you work on video, depending on the codecs, effects, filters, and a bunch of other stuff, just going to the Pro or Max can significantly speed up your playback and renders like four to five times and going to the Ultra can like double that again. So in other words, if you were dropping frames in beach balling, Every time you hit play or dragged an effect in the timeline on Intel and you were waiting up at night or stressing at render time for a client meeting, just going to M1 will get rid of most of that stutter, almost all of those beach balls and cut your rendering time in half, like from 30 minutes down to 15 minutes. And then going M1 Pro or M1 Max will get rid of almost all of that stuttering and spinning and cut rendering times again, like by a half or a third again like to seven or five minutes. And M1 Ultra will, yes, do that again, down to like 2.5 minutes. Of course, this is for very heavy workloads. If you're only filling two of the containers on that ship, you won't see any difference between a ship with two or a ship with four containers. Or think of towing. If you're only pulling a single MacBook Air, it doesn't matter if you use a car or a truck, but if you're pulling a container full of them, it starts to matter a lot. So the closer you get to multiple 8K 12-bit streams with gnarly B-roll codecs and heavy effects and titles thrown in, the bigger the difference you'll see between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra. Also, how much time really matters to you? Because for some things, you can spend time instead of money, and others, not so much. Like, if you have a famous client on the phone and they wanna see a change in the video, and you can render that out in a minute and send it to their iPhone for them, so they can approve it before hopping on a plane, you're absolutely gold. And yes, that is a true story. But if that sounds at all ridiculous to you, then great. You probably just saved yourself an M1 Ultra ton full of cash. Unless of course, money is just no object to you and you enjoy spending it on the latest, greatest Apple Silicon for the biggest possible flex. In which case, I'm guessing you spent it already and you're watching this right now on an M1 Ultra. So <laughs> thanks for doing that. Otherwise, the move from Intel to M1 will solve so much pain for so many people and M1 to M1 Max for so many pros that M1 Ultra is really for the edge of the edge cases. Just all the Apple Silicon you can currently throw at all of your problems. And if that's you, I'm guessing you already know it. If not, get the M1, give it a test drive, start from there, or just listen to the head of Mac product marketing and Apple's VP of Silicon, in the full length version of my interview with them. It's up on Nebula, ad free and sponsor free with my exclusive new studio tour series where I just posted episode three, lighting, alongside episode two, mics and sound, and episode one, cameras. And I'm working on episode four, all these sets right now. And that's the really amazing thing about Nebula. It's where a bunch of your favorite education creators have the absolute luxury of making videos that just don't have to be optimized for YouTube, including bonus and extended versions of videos that I know the nerdiest, most hardcore of you will totally love, all ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula. 
and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie, or just click the link below. And right now, because you're watching this video, you can get Curiosity Stream on sale for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, way, way less than the price of your average Mac dongle for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series, and a whole entire section on technology that goes deep into not just the science, but the ethics behind everything that we're so busy racing to invent. It is the absolute best way to support educational creators directly, and just the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off CuriosityStream, less than $15 a year, and Nebula bundled in for free, just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out this channel, and so does hitting up this playlist for even more hyper-detailed videos on all the M1 Macs and everything that's coming next. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.